Thank you. First off, I want to thank Mila, whose tireless work has put this all together. So a round of applause for Mila. Thank you. So those of you that may not know me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is 9-inch marketing, or because I'm here in Canada, 23-centimeter marketing. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing personal, much to my wife's dismay, about those nine inches. Nine inches happens to be the average distance between your brain and your heart. And I tell people that's the longest and hardest nine inches in marketing. And to me, too much of marketing is about the eyes and the ears and focusing on the prospect. And not enough of marketing is about trying to make that journey to the heart of your customer. And so I'm going to talk to you today about a concept that I call the purple goldfish. And I'm going to take you on a journey that started three years ago. And here I am in New York City at one of these very nice rooftop bars enjoying a $14 beer, as you can only do in New York City. And I see a guy sitting across from me, and it's obvious that he's waiting for somebody. And he's, he's there for about 30 minutes by himself, and finally I lean over to him and I say, my standard line, you know, we spend 10% of our life waiting. It's true. I read it online. And he looks at me, he goes, yeah, he says, I, I, I am waiting. He says, I said, well, the person's obviously not on time. And this guy said something to me that changed my life. He said, there's no such thing as being on time. On time is a myth. And immediately I started thinking about how that applies to the concept of marketing. And that the biggest myth in marketing is the idea of meeting the expectations of your customer. Nobody ever meets expectations. You either exceed expectations or you fall short. Meeting expectations is a myth. It's kind of like playing prevent defense in football. If anybody knows about football, the only thing you do by playing prevent defense is it prevents you from winning. So I started looking at companies that did that, that little extra and how do you bridge that gap to exceed expectations. And the first thing I looked at is social media. And this is Occupy social media right here. And social media to me really wasn't the answer. It was only part of the answer. 90% of word of mouth marketing happens offline. And the me in social media is not about me, the company. It's about me, the customer. And what I wanted to do, I really thought social media was putting the cart before the horse. And really, your job as a business is to give your customers something to talk about, to tweet about, to blog about, and to post to Facebook about. And I started thinking about this idea of marketing glue. And the idea that the little things can make the biggest difference. And the idea of glue being giving little unexpected extras. And it really was embodied in this concept called lanyap. And if you've never heard of the word lanyap, it's a beautiful word, it's a Creole word, French and Spanish, it literally means the gift or to give more. And if you're down in New Orleans, it's customary for the business to give you a little something extra at the time of purchase. And so I started to look for companies that started to practice this idea of marketing land yap. Who here has stayed at a Doubletree Hotel? All right, what's the first thing you get when you, when you check in at the Doubletree Hotel? A chocolate chip cookie. And we're talking a good sized chocolate chip cookie, warm, packed with chocolate chips. An example from, that originated right here in Canada, Toronto Dominion Bank, TD Bank, opens seven days a week and most nights till eight o'clock at night. They understand the idea of a little extra inconvenience. One of my favorite examples, Southwest Airlines. 
When all, when all airlines started to charge for checked baggage, what did Southwest do? Bags fly free, giving that little unexpected extra. But my absolute favorite example, and the reason why it's called the goldfish, happens to do with Kimpton Hotels. Kimpton Hotels absolutely gets the concept of marketing Lanyap. If you stay at a Kimpton property, there's always Starbucks in the lobby. Free Wi-Fi, wine tastings in the afternoon, but my absolute favorite, if you're there for a few days, maybe you're getting a little lonely, they give you a pet goldfish. It's called Guppy Love. So that's why it's called a goldfish, a little thing. Why is it purple? Two reasons. The first being Seth Godin. About 10 years ago, Seth wrote a seminal marketing book called Purple Cow. And the idea that you needed to make your product or service remarkable. The second reason. The birthplace of Lanyap is New Orleans. And purple just happens to be one of the three colors of Mardi Gras. So I saw a few big companies that were doing it, but I really thought I need to figure out small, medium, and large businesses that embrace this concept. So I started a thing called the Purple Goldfish Project. And I set out to find 1,001 examples of companies that gave little unexpected extras. And I don't know what I was thinking about when I came up with the idea of 1,001. I should have taken the advice that somebody once gave me about cross-country skiing. And if you haven't gone cross-country skiing, listen to this. If you're going to start out with cross-country skiing, start with a small country. <laughs> but I wanted to share with you just five examples to maybe get your, your mind going around this concept of marketing Lanyap. And the first comes right here from Canada. And there's a group called Nurse Next Door that provides home health care services. And you know what? They have a great little extra when they make mistakes. And let's face it in business, we all screw up. It's how you handle it that makes the difference. When Nurse Next Door screws up, they send their customers a freshly baked apple pie as a way of saying they're sorry. Literally humble pie. The second one, to take the amps up a little bit, this is Hard Rock in San Diego. And I love this as something that's signature to the brand. If you check in at the Hard Rock, they allow you to borrow a Gibson electric guitar and amp and headphones for your stay. And what they want you to do when you get up in your room is to plug in, put the headphones on, and rock out. This next example comes from the Pacific Northwest. And it's a place called Plaza Cleaners. And I love this as an example of paying it forward. And what Plaza Cleaners does, if you're unemployed or out of work and you need an outfit cleaned, Plaza will clean it for free. What a great message to their customers and the ideas of giving back to the community. This example is Toronto. And it comes from the north end of Boston. And Toronto's proud of the fact that it serves locally sourced seafood. So what's the little extra that Toronto can do to drive that home? Chef Jose Duarte actually takes squid ink and screens a QR code onto the plate. So when they serve your fish to you, you take out your smartphone, you snap the code, and you can find the exact fisherman at the exact time and the exact location where your fish was caught. But let me share with you probably my favorite example of all 1001. And it comes from St. Paul, Minnesota, a place called Izzy's Ice Cream. And Izzy's does two really things that are interesting. For every scoop of ice cream that you buy at Izzy's, Izzy gives you a little mini scoop that gets thrown on top for free. So a great way to sample their product and get people to try new flavors. But here's the genius. Izzy's has a problem. They make about 140 different flavors of ice cream. But in their case, they only have room for 40. So when you show up at Izzy's, there's a good chance that your favorite, flair, favorite flavor is probably not in the case. 
So Jeff Summers, what he's done, he's asked his customers to tell them what their favorite flavor is. He asked them for their Twitter handle, their Facebook account, and their email address. And what he does when he makes a new, new tub of ice cream, he puts an RFID tag onto the tub. He's got a scanner in the case. So when the tub goes into the case, it automatically gets scanned, goes up onto the menu board, right up onto the website, and more importantly, a tweet goes out to the customer, an email goes out to the customer, and a Facebook message telling you that your favorite flavor is now in the case. If that doesn't one-up Pavlov's dog, I don't know what does. So that's my handful of examples. I hope at the end of this, you're ready to think about a purple goldfish and start to think outside the bowl and ask yourselves and your business, what's our purple goldfish? Thank you.